Tech Corner on Schwab Network. I'm Rick Ducat, filling in for George Tillis. This week, we'll take a look at meta platforms. And don't forget, George first covered the stock back in May, so click the link above to view that video. Meta Platforms is the world's largest social media company. Its overall approach is a classic two-sided platform business strategy, meaning it connects distinct groups of people together, such as users and advertisers. For example, take its signature product Facebook, the world's biggest and most widely used social media platform. It's a free social media service where users generate content and data that Meta can use for its own purposes. But then it also sells access to these users through targeted advertising based on analytics, which is the main way it generates revenue. Its broader family of apps includes other well-known platforms such as Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp. Like Facebook, these apps aim to serve as platforms for community building, communication, and content sharing while generating substantial ad revenue. Advertising generates more than 95% of Meta's total revenue, about 55% of which comes from outside the U.S. and Canada. As of September 2025, Meta's apps reached over 3.5 billion daily active users, and its most recent monthly figure was 3.98 billion active users across Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp, representing nearly half of the world's population. Meanwhile, Meta's Reality Labs segment focuses on advancing virtual and augmented reality products. These include the MetaQuest virtual reality headsets, as well as AI-enabled wearable products such as its Ray-Ban smart glasses. Meta's strategic focus also includes significant investments in artificial intelligence with the goal of driving content discovery, enhancing ad targeting, and improving user engagement. Meta Platforms faces competition from several significant players in the technology and digital advertising landscapes. Some notable social media challengers include Alphabet's video behemoth YouTube, TikTok, which is owned and operated by the China-based company ByteDance, and Microsoft's business-focused LinkedIn platform. Meta also competes with Amazon in the digital ad space as well. These companies rival Meta in various domains, such as AI development, cloud computing services, and digital advertising. Other social networking competitors include X, formerly known as Twitter, Reddit, ticker RDDT, and Snapchat, ticker SNAP. In recent news, Meta posted its third quarter earnings results on October 29th, in which they reported adding 60 million users. They beat the street's consensus revenue estimate by $1.66 billion and also beat the high end of management's guidance range by $742 million. Monetization also impressed as average revenue per person rose 18% year over year. However, as with other tech-generative AI companies, Meta's capital expenditure ramp has generated intense investor interest as it chases the newest developments in generative AI. Similar to its Gen AI peers, Meta announced another increase in its 2025 CapEx guidance. This time, they're looking to add between $70 to $72 billion from prior guidance of $66 to $72 billion as they aggressively front-load AI compute capacity. Meta's spending plans would imply a capital intensity level of 36% in 2025, which reflects its total average assets divided by its revenue. This figure is up from 24% in 2024 and 20% in 2023. These numbers are by far the highest among the hyperscalers. Meta also noted that CapEx growth will be notably larger in 2026. If we were to look at Meta's yearly candle chart here, we can see that there's been a pretty significant interruption in the prior price activity from last quarter. After last quarter, we hit our high, 796.25, and then began traveling in a downward sloping channel type shape, connecting the subsequent highs from September as well as late October. If you were to draw a parallel line going across the lows, it matched up decently well to give us potential boundaries. However, earnings threw things for a loop. A significant gap down has brought price all the way back to near the 600 level. We can see that represented an old gap from all the way back in May, May 9th to be more specific. So that gap does seem to have been filled at this point here. So uh, this would be one potential turning point for the bulls who are interested in uh, perhaps trying to find a potential 
bottom. When we do look at our other studies here on this chart, we can see that we have crossed below our standard moving averages that we typically follow, our 21-day, 63-day, and purple 252-day exponential moving averages, our first two in yellow and orange respectively here. But our purple 252, our most significant one, comes in at 659. So we are well below that long-term moving average here. Look out for it in coming days to provide potential resistance to the upside as well. That's how these moving averages often are interpreted, support during uptrends, resistance during downtrends. RSI also showing significant weakness here. We have crossed below that oversold area, that threshold of 30, and we are making new relative lows. So uh, oversold RSI in a trending market typically is regarded as a sign of uh, potential further weakness to come. So uh, look for if things do start to recover, a pushback above that green line near 620, which represents prior lows from uh, May and June. And we can also see that uh, if we were to move above that point and RSI were to recover out of that oversold area, that would give a greater sense of more bullish conviction. Finally, when we look at our other chart here, we can see that our volume profile study shows we have drifted below that significant trading area, our point of control, the heaviest trading area of all according to our volume profile study. That came in right around 713, 714 or so. From there, things started to really trail off in terms of the volume intensity around 690. Now, uh, the bulls are trying to make yet another stand here at this volume concentration between roughly 580 to 620 or so. That's where the heavy trading activity remains. The minus two standard deviation channel, meanwhile, could provide some potential support once again coming in near that 600 level. In summary, Meta Platform's AI investments are generating strong revenue growth with AI tools constantly seeking to improve ad conversions and user engagement that resulted in 26% year-over-year revenue growth last quarter. However, the question facing Meta and other AI players is how to monetize the technology after costly CapEx spending in this space. Still, Meta's dominance in the social media and digital advertising space cements its status within the MAG7 group and among the top performing technology stocks since its inception. That's it for this week's edition of Tech Corner. If you want to watch more, subscribe to the Schwab Network YouTube channel. I'm Rick Ducat. Thanks for watching.